Welcome back into Talking Fitchburg. Today I have uh, a guest from the Egg and Rule Affairs Committee. I have uh, Roger Cohey with me. And Roger, thanks for coming on the show today. And uh, we, you're, you're the guest for the Fitchburg Historical Society today. So we're going to get a nice uh, overview of kind of the past, present, and future of farming. And you have done some good research. Mm -hmm. You've been telling me a little bit, so I'm excited yeah. to hear a lot of his research. <coughs> so Roger, again, thanks yeah. for coming on. Um, Pleasure to be here. And uh, so, why don't we why don't we get into it with uh, the history? What kind of what what was farming like when Fitchburg was just starting off here? Well, uh, actually, everything uh, as far as the farming and ag community started in the in the actually in the uh, 1830s, mm -hmm. and um, uh, it was uh, someplace around um, 1835 1837 that the first farm in Fitchburg was established by a, a gentleman by the name of um, John Stoner. Okay. Now, John Stoner uh, had his farm uh, in the, what would be sort of the northern part of the city today on, mm -hmm. along Seminole Highway. Okay. Um, he, although he was not a full-time farmer, and uh, it's been thought that maybe uh, he wouldn't be claimed as the first because he wasn't that full-time farmer. He worked in a uh, job in Madison, and then, of course, worked on the farm um, at times he wasn't working there. Mm -hmm. The first full-time farmer, which, um, who actually derived all of their income off of the farm, was a Vroman family. Mm -hmm. And the Vroman family also was established, that farm was established on the Seminole Highway, Seminole Road. Uh, and it's, as we know today, it's at the intersection of uh, Whalen and Seminole is where they uh, homesteaded and started farming. Great. Well, what happened then after that uh, from all the late 30s and whatnot, clear up to actually um, 1845 to 1848, mm -hmm. we started to get a real influx of uh, Irish immigrants to the Fitchburg area. Now, uh, as these immigrants started coming in, there actually developed uh, areas that were really three distinct settlements in the city. Mm -hmm. uh, the one settlement to which uh, uh, a lot of people can recognize is it was what they called the uh, Fox Settlement. Okay. Uh, this was a settlement of um, Irish people that uh, had settled along what we know as Highway M, and it was uh, settled by a um, man by Dr. William Fox. Now, Dr. Fox and his family and uh, uh, lived down there, and he was a very prominent doctor in the area, treated, of course, immigrants and his family also uh, treated uh, the Indian population that was here at that time. Okay. Very devoted. Mm -hmm. uh, he uh, thought nothing of going long distances to, to uh, enhance his practice and mm -hmm. work with people. The second settlement occurred uh, during that time, maybe a year later, started along what we know today as Irish Lane Settlement. Okay. Now, the Irish Lane settlement uh, is pretty distinctive of what we know today because Irish Lane is uh, a, a great landmark. Mm -hmm. uh, but we find families there that, such as the Kinney family, the Sweeney Cam family, and the, and the Gorman family, all descendants of that early settlement. Okay. The third settlement, uh, which came about that time also, uh, was along the um, uh, Seminole Road, Seminole Highway. Uh, and, of course, it was called the Stoner Prairie Settlement today. Mm -hmm. There we find that we have descendants with names uh, such as the O'Briens, the Dunns, uh, the, the um, Fromans, and the Laceys. Um, all prominent citizens today, uh, but uh, actually are descendants from that or those early times. Well, that's, that's cool. Just because <coughs> hearing all those names, you hear those road, their road names now around here and yeah. Dunn's Marsh and all that, you know, yeah. it all comes like, oh, that's where that comes yeah. from. So a whole bunch of, you know, the early settlers, which right. makes a lot of sense. Yeah, it, it, it's it's quite intriguing of what, mm -hmm. what happened. And, and then <clears throat> another, a couple other interesting points during that period of time. It was during that period of time that, uh, uh, first of all, there was a, a potato 
potato famine in Ireland at that time. Okay. Well, of course, that took a lot of these people uh, away from the type of uh, farming that they knew, and that's how an immigration came to this area. Also during this area, why wheat was one of the crops that was introduced. Mm -hmm. Now, the wheat, the wheat was um, found uh, to be a crop uh, because of the soil conditions, uh, because of the uh, climate and everything, did quite well. In fact, during those periods of the 1845s, 1850s area and beyond, uh, the state of Wisconsin uh, was a major wheat uh, producer in the country. Really? Well, that went along really pretty good. Mm -hmm. um, uh, in fact, there were some real interesting farm improvements that occurred at that time. And one little um, tidbit about it was mm -hmm. is that um, during this period of time, oxen were, were, were the mode of transportation. Right. Um, they would use oxen to haul their grain, their wheat and whatnot to the markets, mm -hmm. um, some as far as way as Milwaukee. Wow. <laughs> so, but then uh, what happened over the years and clear up to 1870 now, uh, horses came in and in 1870, why the last oxens were, were not used, mm -hmm. everything turned to horsepower okay. during that period of time. Interesting. So uh, it's kind of interesting how improvements in the ag yep. business uh, occurred. Yep. Moved into the horsepower, which you know, exactly. faster and all that. Ex yeah. ex exactly. That's, cool. that's interesting. So first new tech, you know, a new animal. That's <laughs> right, right. And then to take it a little, little bit further to, to jump ahead a little bit. Uh, the first tractors that came into this area, mm -hmm. uh, it was in the uh, we're clear up into the 1920s now mm -hmm. when we had the big steam engines come. Yeah. And then the actual tractors, as we know today, uh, you know, came in in the thir late 30s and 40s, mm -hmm. uh, hit into the Fitchburg area, yeah. and that was a big event uh, when the first tractor came uh, to uh, uh, cultivate and, and everything else yeah. within the, within the I city. I say it would be a huge event. Be nice oh, yeah. Big vehicle going from these horses to this. It's that's like, right. That's huge. That's, that's right. Huge. So, Definitely. so that, that was just a little something that, <clears throat> well, back, back, with the, uh, back with the wheat era, yeah. um, during that time, uh, things were going very, very well throughout the state, but in 1861, why there was what they call as a, the a cinch bug hit okay. as a disease, oh. and it literally wiped out over the next eight or nine years, wiped out all the wheat in the state of Wisconsin almost. Wow! And today, wheat is uh, just a very minimum amount of of production on mm -hmm. on wheat. Um, once the wheat was gone. <clears throat> then they had to decide where they're going, what they're going to do. These these uh, immigrants or these farmers mm -hmm. in, in, in the state as well as Fitchburg, and that's when we started seeing uh, hog production. We started seeing production of hay. We started seeing production of corn, barley, uh, which mm -hmm. was shipped to uh, what we know today as the Madison area mm -hmm. for using it for uh, a brew there, mm -hmm. and. Um, it really then set up the scene for almost like it is today. Uh, so uh, today then we now see uh, Wisconsin as well as Fitchburg uh, being in an entirely different mode of, of um, agribusiness than it was back it then. Was then. And I'm going to hold you right there. I'm going to take a quick break. So we kind of talked about the, the past. And now we're kind of we're going to take a break. When we come back, we'll talk more with Roger on the uh, present and future. You stay right there. We're going to take a quick break. You're watching Talking Fitchburg. <laughs> 